Welcome to this episode on Student Cyclist. Today I want to talk about the tips that I have for a beginner buying their first road bike off of your local classifieds. Obviously there are a lot of benefits to buying used, like a budget type price, a better deal for a higher quality bike at a lower budget price, and making a smaller investment into a sport that maybe you're not sure if you're going to like or not. My first suggestion in your search for your bargain used bike is knowing what size frame you actually need. A good way of finding out what size you might need is checking out some of the online sizing charts that are available, and I'll link a few of those in the description down below. Basically what it's going to get you to do is measure your inseam length and also enter in your height, and it will spit out a frame size that you should need. In my experience, I've seen them spit out numbers that I consider a little bit too big, and a couple times they've come out a little bit too small. But that all really depends on a lot of manufacturers' way of measuring and the frame types that you're looking at. So consider that when you are using a frame sizing chart, and use it as a rough guide for finding out a range of frame sizes that you can probably fit when you're looking at your used deals on local classifieds. At the time of looking at a bike in person, to confirm whether the size of the bike is going to be correct or not, swing a leg over the top tube here, stand with your feet flat, and you should have about an inch between your standover and the top tube. The next thing that I think a person looking at a used bike on a classified site should consider doing is researching the bike that you're actually looking at contacting the seller for. The reason for this is because in my beginner years, I had a hard time telling the difference between something that was higher end versus something lower end, and basically got excited about the price of the bike. If it was around my budget, I was emailing the person right away asking, you know, is the bike still available and basically I want it, not knowing anything about it. And from time to time, nowadays I'll actually be surfing through online classifieds just to see what's out there and every so often I'll see a bike that I recognize and know the cost of new and this person is selling a model year like two, three years old for about the same price. So what might seem like a good deal might be a good deal new. So make sure you check out what this person is selling and see what it was because it's possible that this great deal that you're looking at isn't actually that good of a deal. So once you've determined that a bike is your size and that it's not a deal that's going to rip you off and have you swearing later when you learn a little more about road biking, you're gonna go check out the bike and the first thing you're gonna notice is whether the thing is clean or not. This is my felt FA, which is never clean, so if I was selling this on a local classified site, I would actually expect someone to notice immediately that the cassette is not clean, the chain is not clean, the chain rings aren't clean, and this entire area is pretty much filled with dirt and grime. That has a lot to do with the way the bike is treated most of the time. If you're seeing dirt, grime, grease on the bike all over the place, or even worse, rust anywhere, those are pretty good indicators that the bike is not that well taken care of. What you are looking for is a bike that is clean in generally every area. The drivetrain might always be a tiny bit dirty, but it is nice to see that it is at least stayed on top of. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is really get down and inspect the frame, the wheels, and basically any bearing that's on the bike to make sure that they're all running relatively smooth because that is going to be the real deciding factor on whether or not this bike is actually worth your while because repair bills can sometimes really overweigh the cost of the bike and the deal might not be as good as you thought when you get your repair bill. So what you're going to want to do is look all throughout the frame, mostly looking at the head tube area and basically any welded joints, just to see if there are any bad cracks that are showing up. Any crack is not good actually, so if you see a crack, walk away. The best thing that you can do is basically spin the wheels just to make sure that they're running straight and true. Uh, and then the next thing you want to do is actually check the brake surface if it's a uh, rim brake bike that you're looking at. Most bikes do have a wear marker, and if that is missing, then the wheels are actually past 
their wear area and they're actually getting to the point of being somewhat dangerous to ride. If the wheels don't actually have an indicator, if you feel a bit of a valley or uh, it doesn't feel completely flat when you feel the brake area, that's a really good indicator that the wheels are on their way out and would need to be replaced. For bearings, you've got the headset area, so basically just move the bars back and forth like this. This should be a really smooth action with no real resistance. It should be really tight on the ground, it shouldn't be knocking back and forth, it should make no noise whatsoever. So if it's crunching or if it makes any sort of really bad resistance, that might be something that needs to be replaced and something to consider uh, when you're looking at the price of the bike versus what was new on your research that you did earlier. The next thing you're going to want to check is the bottom bracket area, which is where the crank actually bolts through. This should spin buttery smooth all the way around and should be tight back and forth if you're rocking the crank back and forth. Without a chain checker or anything to check the drivetrain with, it is kind of hard to determine whether or not the chain and the cassette is ready to be replaced. But one good way of doing it is to actually come here to the front chain ring on the biggest one, grab one of the links and pull. If there's a big gap between um, the chain ring and the chain being pulled away, there's a good chance that it needs to be replaced. I would never let that be something to keep you from buying a bike because it's just regular for a drivetrain to wear out. So once you're happy with everything that you've looked at mechanically after inspecting the entire thing, the next thing you need to do is take the bike for a test ride to make sure that you actually like it and road biking in general. It's possible that you've never ridden a road bike and this might be your first time so you need to find out if these drop bar bikes with skinny tires are actually for you. So what you need to bring with you is the kit that you are actually going to ride in. I can't count the amount of times that I've seen people going to look at bikes in a pair of jeans, a t-shirt with a pair of sneakers on. Jeans are not what you're going to be wearing when you're riding this bike the majority of the time. So to find out if the bike is actually going to fit you and you like the way it rides, you should be wearing what you would ride in. Go for a ride, make sure you like the bike, make sure you like the way it feels. If the fit isn't quite right, that's not that uh, big of a deal. It's something that you're going to work on in your entire road riding life. I've been working on mine for the last two or three years. The best part about the test ride is you're going to really notice if there's anything that you missed on your inspection when you were looking at it. If your seller doesn't want to let you take the bike for a test ride, that's something that I would be a little bit worried about, especially as a beginner if you're not exactly sure about a lot of road biking jargon and stuff that you're looking at. Because the test ride is really going to be what makes the decision on whether you like the bike or not. It might seem relatively obvious, but if you have any friends who are into road riding, be sure to inquire with them about anything that you're looking at, because all of us who are into road riding are usually very good for helping out beginner road riders who are looking to get into the sport with their first purchase, because I know that there is a lot to take in when you're looking at road bikes. There's so many different group sets, frame types, companies making different things that it can really make your head spin. So if you've got someone that can put a lot of that into perspective for you or help explain you through the different stuff that you're looking at, definitely harness that and use it to your advantage when you're looking at your used bikes. So there you go, there's some information on what I think a beginner rider should be looking at and doing to make sure that you get a great deal on a used road bike with your local classifieds. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to answer you pretty much straight away because I have no life. Also, if you're looking for any more information on different frame types or drivetrain types or in general looking at different road bikes and the different road bike types that you can get, check out the videos that are posted on the Student Cyclist channel. Subscribe to see more videos like this that will hopefully help you in getting into the world of road biking and checking out some of my riding in general. Until next time, thanks for watching.